Okay. All right, everyone. The time has come. We've been counting it down for quite a bit. I am Whitney Ingram. I am just here for a second. We are, this happens every time. We have a little bit of a, um, an echo. Okay, so we are here with uh, the KTT Young hosts. We have Hallie Seiler, Riley Schaff, and Maddie McBride, and they are becoming better hosts with each and every interview. And we are blessed and lucky and honored to have as their guest this week, uh, the one, the only, the GOAT, Matt Guy. Um, so we love these uh, interviews because the KTT show offers questions that we haven't heard Matt answer a bunch of times on other podcasts or other shows. Um, kids ask the darnest things. So um, I can't wait to see where they take this. I have full faith in them. And with that being said, I want to just thank you, Matt, for giving up your time. You're awesome. What a My friend pleasure. to both Girls Throw 2 and KTT you have proven to be. Uh, girls, make me proud. Y'all got this, okay? So me, Riley, and Maddie are like, we're so excited to be able to have you on the KTT <laughs> show today. And we want to ask you some questions that a lot of people haven't asked you or we haven't like known the answers to. Um, okay. So I'm going to start off by asking you, uh, since you're the goat and goats love to eat, what's your favorite food to eat? My favorite food is lobster tails or crab legs. Take your pick. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely yeah, we love will. seafood, yeah. That's, yeah. Really funny That's really funny because when we just got on here, um, when you just did an example of what you love to eat, she mentioned crab legs. Yeah, yeah. yep, that is definitely the top of my list, <laughs> without a doubt. <laughs> my whole family uh, loves, we love seafood, so it's a, we don't get it a lot because it's expensive. But when right, we do, it we is expensive. So I'm the same way. It is expensive. So yeah, I treat myself about once every two months, maybe I get to treat myself to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I normally eat I normally eat shrimp for seafood. Love I shrimp too. I love shrimp too, but crab legs and lobster tails are just the best. Actually, me and Brett were at a Super Bowl party in Vegas Sunday. Um, we got invited to this big fancy Super Bowl party. And they had all you could eat lobster tails at this party so yeah we we it was pretty ugly we threw it down pretty hard <laughs> what do you what do you think about like all the oysters and stuff like that do you like that stuff like oysters too i do i do i oh, just what? i'm a seafood i love seafood <laughs> octopus uh, no but pretty much anything other than octopus yes <laughs> i've had i've had uh fried calamari before and i didn't i didn't really like it. it's too chewy yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, I don't think I would try an octopus. Ugh. I don't even like looking at them. I don't think I like eating them. I'm the same way. <laughs> the same way. <laughs> so, um, whenever my dad and I would play with each other, we usually mm -hmm. don't do well because we end up getting an argument about what bags we have to throw. So I'm wondering, how do you and your Brett, how do you and your son, your son Brett, get along throwing bags together so that's and that's an interesting question because i'm at the point in my game where i like a faster bag brett's at the point in his game where he's liking a slower bag so there is some discrepancy there right so it's kind of been 50 50 here lately we've been throwing the slower bags more than the fast bags. So the first few terms we played in this year, we were throwing the fire incinerators, which are faster <clears throat> because I was like, Hey, I'm on fire. You need to figure out how to throw these bags. Just throw it down the middle and let's rock. Right. <clears throat> and then as the years have gone on, I'm like, okay, I'm on fire. I should be able to throw anything. So I'll throw your bags. I just got to throw them down. The same concept, right? I just got to throw your bag down the middle and you'll be confident. So <clears throat> it's, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of whoever can adjust easier should throw the other person's bag. But the name of the game, regardless, is throwing down the middle is what wins. I don't care mm -hmm. what bag you have, how you're throwing it, if it's fast, if it's slow. If you throw it down the middle, you're going to win. So yeah. whoever's more confident in their shot, they should throw the other person's bag. 
We would be, would be my got, answer to that. Yeah, I just got some, they're skinny boards and they've got KTT on them. And it fo- it helps you focus on staying just down, down the middle of the board. And they're, I love them. They're really, they're really good for being able to stay in the middle of the board. Yeah, so you're liking the skinny boards? See, that, that's not, I tried them once and I was like, eh, I just, I <laughs> Take the big board and I the same thing, throw it down the middle. But I but I get the concept of it. You're focusing your yeah. eyes to train to be down the middle and you're teaching your mechanics to strictly be down the middle. I get the concept of it. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, I and normally care, I normally care about the bags I throw in order for me to throw them because it'd be hard for my dad and I to select the bags you want to throw. I normally go with mine because I like a slower bag than a faster so okay. I'm, so. I'm more i love slower bags because where because jordan langworthy taught me how to throw and i've got a really low hard flat bag so i've got to have something stickier to be able to stay on the board i understand that yep i understand that mm-hmm. okay so you go to a lot of big tournaments and how mm-hmm. do you prepare for those big tournaments uh so I practice. Um, so, you know, I work. So I get up in the morning, I work all day, I come home and eat, and then it's practice time. So like a, a good example is the national we were just at in Vegas, right? Mm-hmm. So when the opens were going on, I'd maybe go down and practice one day, sometimes two days a week. But leading up to Vegas for three weeks, I would literally go down every day if it was just for an hour fine sometimes it was three hours four hours if it was a saturday or a sunday where i wasn't in a tournament it could be five or six hours but it was every day it was focused and it was good practice it wasn't like just being down throwing or somebody else there and we're goofing off and doing something it was serious get my mechanics right to practice and it was focused so what that does is if you're if you go in this tournament you've done all this practice and you're feeling confident, your, your shot's feeling great. When the pressure's on, then you just got to trust your mechanics. And if you trust your mechanics, your mechanics will get you through, will get you through the tough moments and the high pressure moments. Yeah. On, on average, how, how many hours a day would you say you practice? Uh, so for the last three weeks, I practiced roughly two hours a day. If it was uh, Saturday or Sunday, it was five to six hours on those days. Well, I guess it's what it takes to be as good as you. It, n- nothing comes easy. You gotta, you gotta work at it, and you gotta earn it. And and it paid off for me. I mean, I was, I went to Vegas. I was confident it could be. There wasn't a shot I felt like I couldn't make, and it, I mean, it paid off, right? So, you know, that's the rewarding part at the end is if you get that win, it it just feels extremely rewarding because you went and you earned it. Speaking of winning, how did you feel when you um, won singles? Like, what bags were you throwing? I was throwing my fire incinerators. And like I said, I felt just a big, huge reward because I worked so hard these last three weeks to earn that singles victory. So it was, it was exciting. It was rewarding. And it was a big relief of breath. Like, I did it. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty big. Like Las Vegas, I mean, seems like a pretty big place. A lot yep. of pressure. I don't think it I'd is. be able to. And, and, I, and for whatever reason, I don't know why or what it is, but my record in Vegas is incredible. When I go to Vegas, it seems like I don't lose. Don't know why. Just the way it is. <laughs> So whenever you have a bad day throwing, how do you come back from that and reset from a bad day? Oh, you just got to strictly forget it. I mean, I'll talk to myself. I mean, if you if you watch me play, you'll see me talking to myself under my breath the whole match, good and bad. Um, if I'm if I'm stroking and it's good, I just keep telling myself, just keep trusting mechanics, keep trusting mechanics. If I make that mistake, you got to – Yes, you got to recognize the mistake and uh, know exactly what you did, why that bag went right or why that bag went left or why you overshot it by four inches. 
and if you're if you practice enough and get your mechanics right, you should know exactly why. I mean, it's all feel. When you come through, man, you can as soon as you let go of that bag, you can pretty much feel if it's going in or not going in. And if you, I'm sure you've all had those days where you're throwing good, as soon as that bag's out of your hand, you know if that bag's going in or that bag is not. Sometimes you get surprised, right? I mean, sometimes mm-hmm. you get surprised, but for the most part, you can feel it. So, you know, a lot of times it'll be, oh, I dipped my shoulder coming through. Can't do that. Or it's, oh, I tried to mm-hmm. overthrow it. Can't do that. You know, just oh, you hit your leg. tell myself, yeah, tell myself just simple mm-hmm. little things and try not to make that mistake again. Yeah, everybody, everybody always wonders, like, what kind of music you're listening to when you play. And I've always thought it's like ACDC or like Metallica or something. But what do you actually listen to? You're, you're, you're pretty much spot on. It's, um, it's a lot of, I grew up in the 80s was my high school days. So it's a lot of old school heavy metal rock. It's ACDC. It's Motley Crue. It's Judas Priest. It's Kiss. Tesla. Just big hair rock bands, they called them. <laughs> that seems kind of hard Is to that- focus when you're playing the game. But it's all, but it's all, it's all like high adrenaline, fast music. So it, it fires me yeah. up. It does. It fires me is up. Is that, is that like one of your superstitions or do you have like any superstitions when you play? So I have on my phone here, I have, I can show you actually, I can, I got my phone right here. I can show you. Um, let me click here and here. I don't know. Can you guys see this? Can you see my phone? It says Matt Matt's cornhole tunes, right? Mm-hmm. So before I start a match, I click Matt's cornhole tunes. There's the list of all my songs, and I just hit play, and it plays the same song every game in the same order. <laughs> so like so- when when I get when I'm playing a game and it gets to Detroit Rock City, that's when I'm like, "Ooh, yeah, this has been a long game." <laughs> <laughs> so um i know in um i believe virginia you played alex hicks i've yep. known him for a while how Long did you game. feel when he beat you after about an hour or so i mean i felt like okay yeah he 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 earned it is the first thing i felt was man he earned that one because it was a long game i knew i threw good I knew there was, I think, four points in that game where I had a bag hanging halfway in, if not more, that just didn't fall in that could end the game. That's the breaks of the game. Sometimes the breaks go your way. Sometimes they don't. But my first thought was, boy, here in that game, because I knew I threw good. So, obviously, he had to throw good to stay with me. There was a few bags that didn't go in. There was a, There's always, whenever you have a loss, there's always a, a few shots you think back to of man, you know, I missed that airmail by that much. That could have been the difference, but that's just that's the nature of the game. <clears throat> but I mean, it was kudos. To, it was a tip of the hat, and kudos to him for for a great match. Um, but you're going to have those throughout the year. I mean, you look at all the opens I've played in, and then this first national. I mean, there wasn't an easy win in any of them. They were all just battles. That's just where the game's at these days. Everybody's just that good. So when you win a big tournament, you've definitely earned it. And he earned that one, 100%. You're a little bit like, come on, a kid beat me. No, no, because I know I've played him before. I know he's a good player. I've seen Mm -hmm. him beat some very good players and throw some very good games. So is he a kid? Yep. But can you throw the bag down the middle in the hole? Yep. So he's just another opponent. Just another opponent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you think, like, if you had to pick somebody to that, like, a kid that's coming up and that is going really good, um, who would you pick to think that they would take your spot for being the goat? Uh, if I had to take one, mm-hmm. I mean, at this point, I'd probably have to take Alex just because of how composed he is during matches i mean he does he keeps his composure very well and brett was that way when brett was young man brett nothing ever shook brett he was just cool as a cucumber and right now alex is that way but you know i've seen 
I've seen many kids come through that everybody's like, oh, he's the next, he's the next, he's the next. And then they, they go away. So you just never know. You just, you just don't, you just never know. But if I had to choose right now, I would take Alex just because he's, he's consistent, he's steady, and he's got a very cool demeanor about him. Do you ever get mad when Brett beats you or if you play him in a real tournament and he beats you, do you ever get upset or are you happy for that he won? No. Um, so I don't like to lose. That's a fact. But <laughs> I don't I don't mind losing if I play well, just like the match with Alex. I played really well. He, he beat me. I tipped my hat. Um, I get mad when I lose if I don't play well because I, that's a me thing, right? I didn't perform well, so shame on me. That's when I get mad. But losing's part of playing any sport, right? You're, you're going to lose. I don't care how good you are or who you are. You're going to lose. That's part of it. I just hate playing bad is what drives me crazy. That's what gets me mad. But if I play good and Brett plays better and beat me, then absolutely hats off. Now, if I play Brett and I play like total garbage and he beats me, yeah, I'm going to be mad. Not at Brett, at me. <laughs> um, what's your most embarrassing moment that you've had when you've been playing? Um, actually, I had a pretty good one last weekend. I don't know if anybody saw it. I was on the live stream board. You fail. <laughs> and you fail. I was, <laughs> Um, I went, I walked up and just to tell him, Hey, we're going to go twice. And I took two steps back. And next thing I know, I went down, I tripped right over the board, <laughs> took out the banner behind me and everything. <laughs> so um, that, was, that was a pretty smooth move, <laughs> but I won. So it worked. <laughs> I guess I felt help you. Right. <laughs> it didn't hurt. <laughs> So that that was that was that was a pretty. Uh, I'm sure my face was red on that one. <laughs> <laughs> so I've seen you do these TikTok videos, and yeah. you do four bags in the home with one yeah, hand. Yeah, airmailed four. How about that? <laughs> how do you do them? And how many tries did it take? That was, believe it or not, that was. So I shot a video right before that where I was just throwing airmails, and I threw 24 airmails in a row. Um, I made 25, 26 and then missed one. So that's why I only showed the 24 in a row that I did. But, um, right after that, I like took a break and I was like, man, I made all four bags at one time last year. I wonder if I could airmail all four one time. I've never tried it. Believe it or not, my 11th try was that shot you've seen on TikTok. 11th try. And I was like, I was surprised. Like, I was like, Ooh, oh, cause I remember when I made all four last year, not airmail, but I made all four in one shot last year, it took me, had to be 60, 70 tries just to get all four to go at the same time. It's insane. My 11th try, they all went in. I was like, oh, sweet, done. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and that, that video, awesome. actually, I, I looked at that. It's at like 530,000 views on TikTok right now. I was like, oh, pretty cool. <laughs> I want to be able to do that. My hands will carry that. Yeah, so you just kind of set them all in between the fingers and let them rip is how I did it. <laughs> okay, so whenever uh, you're not so, playing cornhole, yep, like like days that you're off, what do you do for fun or with your family or something? Um, so you know if it's a if it's a weekday, you know I just come home work and I just I'll chill more or less. Sometimes I'll go downstairs and. I'll get on uh, Carson's PlayStation and do some, um, what is it, VR. He's got the PlayStation uh, virtual reality. I like that. So I'll do that some with Carson. But um, if it's a weekend, we usually go and do something. Um, take the grandkids and do something or the family or do something or go to my mom and dad's and visit. It's it's usually, if it's not a cornhole tournament, we're doing something as a as a family. We love being around each other. We all get along. We all have a blast. I love being around the grandbabies. So it's generally something family related when I'm not playing for sure. Yeah. Okay. So 
I'm almost 100 percent sure. I'm not the only one wondering this, but what is the deal with the bright colored shoes? The deal with all oh, the shoes. Okay, I will, yeah. I will tell you that story. So we took the grandkids to the mall to see Santa right before Christmas. And my mm -hmm. son, Carson, who was 16, was with us. And I said, Carson, I was like, I need some new shoes for TV this year. Come with me and let's find me some shoes. So we went to like four or five shoe stores. I usually, I've always wore black or blue for as long as I can remember. My shoes have been blue or they've been black. And we're looking and I can't find blue. I can't find black. So after like the fifth store, I was like, dude, just pick me out some shoes. I really don't care right now. So these Mellow Ball, he's an NBA player. These shoes just came out. Literally, they were delivered to this store like three hours earlier that day, the lady said. So he comes over with these bright, actually that color is Red Blast, it's called. She comes over with these, or he comes over with these shoes and he's like, here you go, dad. And I was like, really? And he's like, yep. I said, okay. <laughs> so I put them on, I tried them on, they fit. So Carson's standing there and he's like, so I'm going to be real jealous of you. You know that, right? And I was like, see if they got a pair in your size, Merry Christmas. So he got a pair too. <laughs> Did you get bad so, matching with those shoes? So he's got a pair just like them. And then actually the first time I wore them, everybody's like, well, you throw fire. So those shoes fit perfect. I was like, you know what? Good point. I throw fire bags. These shoes are fire. Good point. And then they made me, the bags I was throwing in Vegas were special bags to kind of match my shoes. Yes. Yep. Yeah, I noticed that. I was like, <laughs> I didn't know if it was like purpose or if that's what he's just throwing. But um, I was looking, I was like, well, that one, and them bags are the same color as the yep. shoes. <laughs> yep. I, yep. Fire asked us what color bags we wanted for a broadcast board, and I said red blast. So that's as close as they could get, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> It stands out, that's for sure. Can't miss them. <laughs> what is on your bucket list this year? My bucket list? Yes. Um, bucket list is long. It really is. Um, I mean, it's no secret the way I've been throwing this year. I've been consistent, which is actually crazy. The numbers I threw – in Vegas for the whole tournament, like identically mimic the numbers I've had all year. My average for the year, to like 10.65 10 average mimicked, 56 point whatever four bagger percentage mimicked, 85% bag in the hole percentage. I mean, it was just crazy how mimicked that tournament matched my year so far. But um, bucket list is player of the year, MVP doubles team of the year, world champion. I mean, every top spot I can win is my bucket list this year. No question about it. And I'm going to be working hard all year to get it. Um, so we know you're a huge Bengals fan. And yep. uh, are you like in uh, any other sports like baseball? Yeah, I pay attention to all of it. Um, you know, I pay attention to football, obviously Bengals fan, baseball, Reds fan. Every I live close to Cincinnati, yeah. so I'm a Cincinnati fan, right? Always have been. But um, do I, you know, UK basketball fan. But do I, like, live and die by all the sports? No. I got, I got my job, I got my family, and I got my own little sports world in Cornell. So if those teams win, great. If they don't win, it don't change my life any. Would I have loved to see the Bengals win a Super Bowl? I certainly would have. Did it really affect my life because they didn't? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we used to live uh, about 12 miles away from the Cincinnati uh, Red Stadium. Oh, did you? And yeah. We, yeah, we used to go all the time and watch them, which I play. I'm big into like travel softball and stuff. So it's yep. always, it kind of runs in my family. Awesome. Yep, I live about 20 minutes from the stadium, so pretty close. <laughs> yeah, me, me and Brent went to the same. We had the same kindergarten teacher, and we went to the same school. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I remember hearing that. <laughs> so, 
So when did you get so when did you get sponsored by Fire Cornhole? Uh we we started with Fire Cornhole at the beginning of last season. And um they've been a great sponsor. I mean, couldn't have asked for better people than Jason and Rachel to be sponsoring us. They've been fantastic. Uh, they came out with the incinerator, excuse me, incinerator bags, which are, man, they just fit everything I do with my throw. They just fit it. So um, they keep coming out with newer bags. I'm like, nope, I'm good. I, everything about the incinerators just fit my game. So I have no interest in changing from them. Um, but nope, fire has been great. I've been sponsored by Slick Woodies from day one. I've been sponsored um by elite cornhole who's kind of a new group started they like they're in the nashville area um they're sponsoring us this year and then got a couple other things working with like mischief maniacs as our agents and um do what yeah i mean guy nation's always kind of kind of been there with jack hand in hand with slick woodies and just a lot of a lot of exciting stuff going on in our world right now and that's why i'm practicing and working so hard because all these people are putting their trust in me so it's up to me to perform for them so that's another part too i don't want to let them down if you could pick another doubles partner like and they weren't on fire who would you pick uh so i gotta pick a partner that ain't on fire yes so it can't be jamie can't be eric can't be brett can't be kaylee can't be megan <laughs> Nope. Nope. Um, probably take Josh Holland right now. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd probably take Josh Holland right now if I had it. You know, if I, hey, you can't play with anybody on fire, pick somebody else. I'd probably, right now, I'd probably take Josh Holland. Me and him had a good conversation That's out in Vegas, and he's a, he's a great thrower. Right? I don't know if you guys seen the game. Me and Josh played against each other in Vegas. We both threw over 11. I beat him 21 to 20. <laughs> yep. uh, so if if you could be any animal in the world, um, what would you be and why? Um, A goat, duh. Besides the <laughs> goat, not a goat. Yeah. Besides the not goat. A goat. <laughs> Oh, uh, I would have to. I would have to be a dog. I mean, dogs are the greatest animals in the world. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. they're so loyal and loving, and just you know, man, you know, if I have a bad day, I come home to my dogs. They, they're always there to just, you know, daddy's home and love on me and lick me. You got one right here. Love on me and lick me and cheer mm -hmm. me up. And here. this is Nilla. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of dog is he? What is Nilla? Chihuahua. Chihuahua Yorkie mix. She's got a big mouth, but she's a she's a sweet girl. <laughs> I have a dog huh. named Friendly, and he's sitting on the floor huh. right now. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> yep, I would definitely be a dog oh. if I could be an animal. Well. Yep, an animal, yes. I would be a dog. If it was something in the water, I would be a dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you want to be a dolphin? Because all they do is just swim around and have fun and jump, and seems like they're always having a good time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we actually, we have two dogs, and they're, they're really smart. They're tiny dogs. Come here. Yeah. Here's one oh. of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't carry my dog. He's too big and heavy. He's too big and heavy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got He's one that's right big now, and so heavy. Too. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. But yep, I would definitely be a dog. Mm -hmm. Do any further family what, members? What? Yep. What was that? Do any of your family members play cornhole besides your son? Mm, not really competitive, no. No. They play some, but not not competitive. <laughs> but they're, what, you know, what, as, as they get older, I'm sure they'll 
you know, well, we'll see. We'll hope they get into it. We'll see. What what made you want to start playing there? Did you just kind of pick up a bag or? I did. Um, so I used to pitch horseshoes back in the day with my dad, and I was pretty good at it. And the first time I seen cornhole, I was just instantly good at it. So I was like, oh, I can do this. You know, it was just, it was pretty easy the first time I did it. And then uh, in the year 2000, was I seen a flyer for a tournament. So I grabbed my brother and we went and played this tournament. Didn't win. I think we went two and two. But um, could definitely see that it was fun, enjoyed it. And then I started seeing more tournaments pop up and there was, you know, prize money, go win money. It's like, yeah. So I just started doing it and it was 21 years later, still going. Now I'm making real good money doing it and having a ton of fun. <laughs> Only the bag is a lot lighter than throwing a horseshoe thingy. Oh, yes, it is much lighter. Don't hurt as bad either when it hits you. <laughs> <laughs> do you know about the Kids Show 2 tournament in April? I do. I've seen that. I've seen it on Facebook. Sure do. You should come and be the pro to be on the dunk tank. Mm, yeah, you should let us dunk tank you. That's make sure you don't break it possible when i'll have to look at the date and make sure i got that date open and we'll that's a possibility where they haven't had that in eight, when is it texas it's in texas it's in, in texas but well, i can't texas. think of a better pro that would be more fun to dunk than the goat <laughs> <laughs> oh, so these we, can, girls... we may be able to arrange that we'll see We'll see these girls the, are fun, aren't they? Get with me on that, and we'll see if we can work that out. Yeah, of I will. I will. Um, these girls are good, right? They're fun. They ask some fun oh, questions. Absolutely, I know all three of them. I've met all three of them, and, and absolutely, that's they awesome. Well, it says a lot about who you are and the kind of person you are, Matt. I think that you gave up your time tonight to like be part of this new Kids Throw Two show and movement. Um, I did have one question that I wanted them to ask that none of them did. I think they were maybe a little too scared. Uh, actually, I had two. One okay. is, what do you think you do most to annoy your sweet wife, Beth Guy? What do I do most to annoy my sweet wife, Beth Guy? <laughs> 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 that's that's yeah that's hard to say because there's a long list <laughs> um, everything she's yeah <laughs> you know like it could be wet towels on the ground like leaving the no, toilet seat up I, no that's the other way around on that one <laughs> oh. <laughs> like leaving wet towels on the ground i'm like no that's the other way around on that one. <laughs> that's so funny no, I do my own laundry. I pick up my own clothes. That, yeah, I mean, yeah. you're like a, a gem for sure. Um, I would. I'll say I'd that say um, probably the biggest thing is I never do the dishes. That do yeah, you, are, do you leave dishes in the sink? I do. That is yeah. probably my one thing, and it annoys her. Yeah, yeah. that's that's up there. That's up there. It's pretty pretty <laughs> cliche. I think I think a lot of wives have to deal with that. But I will say that she's got to be a patient soul. And the fact that she she puts up with so much cornhole. She told me she only has one rule, girls. The only time they're not allowed to play cornhole is on holidays. Yeah. So she puts up with a lot of cornhole, I think. Um, <laughs> but anyway, and then the only other question was, I told these girls, you are a fabulous singer, something that not everyone might know. Um, those <laughs> who have seen the Guy Nation um, uh, cornhole star video, yeah definitely maybe know this um thank you for including girls throw two yep. um in that Howie video was, but, Howie uh, was in it too <laughs> yeah, so I, I mean was, I was in. it's very fun to think to be a part of um but you can tell how great his voice is when you watch that part um what we want to know was what's your go-to karaoke song pour some sugar on me i we listen girls i've heard him i've seen a video where he sings it on a party bus he's pretty good at it <laughs> <laughs> so matt just to close it up what advice would you give to these girls or any of the kids who are just coming up in the sport um you know the sport has changed i have to imagine since you first mm -hmm. you know became changed whether it's immensely. 
Yep. Whether it's whether it's technique that people are gravitating towards, tech not bag technology, or just sheer level of competition that's out yep. there. I'm all sure. The yeah, you've seen them all. So um, just from from the mentor of the of all mentors being you to all kids out there who want to be like you, what what do you got? I I kind of said it earlier, really. Um, it's it's practice and getting your mechanics right and then trusting your mechanics and it's it's down the middle wins exactly um, down the middle is what no i have taken from it. that down the yeah. little men down the yeah. women jesus <laughs> down the middle wins. <laughs> yeah it's a tough that's a that's a tongue twister but i will say that that i've gotten that from you is you always say if you can just get it down the middle you know, then you'll do, you'll outlast the opponent for most, mm -hmm. you know, for the most part, uh, you can yep. do these fancy roll shots and everything, but they're risky, <laughs> you know, yeah. and yeah. they're not that consistent always. Yeah. I mean, I just, I mean, I've been in five straight finals, six, if you count the USA tournament, um, I throw down the middle and I throw air mails. Uh, what is fancy. your, what is nothing your most, fancy celebrated win so far with the acl like the one that makes you most proud so far doubles or singles ah go back all the way back to 2017 when me and brett won the doubles world championship it's nice to win with a son right i mean th oh those are gosh. gold I don't cry like a baby when i watch it i cried like a baby when i was in i want to say <laughs> eerie eerie and brett was on the broadcast that's the first time yep. i kind of was at a live event in this world of cornhole and i just watched you go over and hug him afterwards and i was just like yeah. oh, the mom in me I, came out <laughs> i was crying when he won it just yeah. that's just being a dad man yep i that's know and we dad. love yep. we love brett here's the thing i'm a team sliders fan i hope that doesn't bother you because you're not you're what are you a woodchuck right um geez what am i Cheyenne, <laughs> team Cheyenne. We'll just say no, team I'm Cheyenne. On, uh, Ryan Smith's team. Oh, Ryan Smith. You got first pick. Yep. You were the very first drafted pick. Carpet that baggers. Made. That's it. Carpet, Carpet baggers. Carpet baggers. Yep. Yep. Now, did you feel honored to be the first draft pick of the first team draft? Yeah, that was cool. That was. That was cool. Just a little I cool. Seen, I seen, <laughs> I seen Ryan in Virginia as he was leaving the weekend before that draft. I said, hey, you take a number one overall. And he went, <laughs> yeah i asked him all the time i asked his brother i'm friends with sean um it was but everybody said how could he not take the goat so yeah, I mean, um we'll see what do you think about the team component um eh, we'll see how it goes because honestly i um let's see that was saturday morning right sunday no of, yeah no it was, yeah, yeah saturday yeah, was morning saturday you're right morning, saturday morning so. yep so it was after Friday night and then the singles <laughs> when I made it to the finals. So I was out celebrating and had yeah. to get up like extra early in the morning to go to that. So, eh. and if you, if you only have so much energy to expend, you know, then you're yeah. probably going to save it more for not the team yeah. events. I would imagine, but I mean, that's just, it is what it is, right? hundred percent. I mean, yep. Well, ladies, yep. <laughs> I, I I'm trying to get a pair of those Mac eye shoes. I heard somebody ask about the shoes. Yeah, I, yeah, I have been looking them up. I'm like on eBay stalking them right now. It's right? Hard. Yeah, they're, they're a little out of. Out, he'll sell them. <laughs> yeah, ask him. Ask him what he's gonna upcharge me for this. I just love that you like were thinking about something subtle, and this is what we decided on. That's so fun. <laughs> no, that's what it ain't that's... what we decided on. I got I couldn't find what I wanted. So I was like, pick me out shoes. I don't care. So when and that's what he came up. I was like, fine. Yep. <laughs> that's an ultimate like prank on dad. I love it. But, but it turned I, but out it's so cool. Because it's turned out like, so those cool. Shoes are, those shoes are fire. You throw fire. I'm like, you know what? I didn't put two plus two together, but good point. And to be honest, Matt, the couple of times we've been at live events since you wear them and I'm trying to find you, you are so easy to find. Trey Ryder <laughs> told me the same thing. Easy to yeah. spot. <laughs> easy to spot. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, we could not appreciate you more. Ladies, any other last minute sign off questions or statements that you want to say to Mr. Matt Guy? No. Mm -mm. Glad well, to have you on. Yeah, it's so glad to have you on. I mean, yeah. this Enjoy is it. you are our third or fourth guest on the show. Um, and you were all on, we gave they all gave us lists, 
about what who in the industry could have been pro or like a tray rider if they wanted to uh, interview you made everyone's list. So um, it was a no brainer to reach out and ask. And we could not be more appreciative that you said yes. Cool. Yeah. So, my, um, my pleasure. We're happy to do it anytime. You know that. And we'll look for you in the dunk tank at the KTT tournament that first weekend in April in Texas. Yeah, that could happen. That could happen. <laughs> you might not be able to beat that guy, but maybe you can dunk him, girls. Right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I appreciate all of you guys. Have a great night. And, um, Keep an eye on KTT and sign up for the tournament if y'all haven't already done so. All right. All right. Bye, Good you night. guys. Thanks, Matt. Yep.